Evening folks, how you doing? Oh, I've forgotten to bring up the chat one second. I will not be seeing any of you for a minute. So we can get this done. Hope you're all doing well. Hope the microphone is working as soon as I can actually see ya. I'll be able to find that out, I'm sure. Pom to Pimbo, other useful people are already yelling. Let's see. Oh, no, not that. Hey, Pom to Pimbo. Let's pop out. Right. Okay. Cool. So Twitch is not showing me any chat earlier than now. So, um... Ah, stop trying to tell me things, Twitch! Right! Yo! Right, we're good to go. Hey, Jace. How you all doing? Let's see who's hanging out so far this evening in Finacell. Um... Inclusus, uh, Mackle, and... Sorted August, I'm having a bit. Hello! Uh, it's gonna be a chill one today. Oh, that's... Sorry, set things up right over here. Um, so today I just wanted to play with um, a 2D physics library. I just want like to get it installed and see how far we get. Thanks for the AVOK, Pop to Pimp. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's been on the list of to-dos for ages, and uh, Borodust does great jobs wrapping these things up. So I really wanted to have a see um, what's there, and um, this is a nice low-level library as well. I think it's pretty much just. Uh, the bindings and a couple of helpers. So what we'll just try and do is pull this down, get the basic example working, and then see if we can get anything drawing and moving around. Uh, that is the plan for now. Um, get this guy going. Okay, so... Yes, Chipmunk is an excellent um, 2D physics library written in C, uh, which made, made it was very, meant it was very amenable to wrap. Uh, I tried wrapping it at one point, but I didn't get too far. Bodge did a much better job. Uh, so Borodust did a much better job. Um, and he's also packaged up the binaries. So I think we should be able to um, quick load this project and get everything we need. I'm just going to have a quick look here to see what it depends on. Okay, so we I think we just need to pull in Chipmunk Blob and then uh, and Chipmunk itself. I think that's it. Let's start there and see where we go. Okay, so let's get a new project going. Actually, I've got a quick project here already. Um, make projects. Let's make sure I'm in the right directory because I'm... Yeah, there we go. Um, chip play. Oh, boy. What have I broken now? Value chip layer is not of type stuff. Oh yeah, it's uh, this is meant to be a string. All right. Not like that. Not like that. Okay. So first thing to do is just get into this package. Um, to begin with, we don't actually need any graphics, so that space over here is kind of dead space at the moment, but we'll we'll come back to that hopefully a little later. Um, this stream could be very short if uh, this doesn't work, um, because, like, yeah, this is, this is all I really planned to do this evening. Um, actually, did I, did I rename that, or did I... All right. Okay, so let's see what we've got over here. So we need chipmunk blob and bodge chipmunk. So that's just say what we depend on. Depends on bodge chipmunk and chipmunk blob. We're gonna load both of these. Um, Whatever the correct way of doing that is. Something like this. Where's my coffee? There we go. 
Now this isn't something I'm looking at integrating into Daft, uh, because that was primarily top-down. Um, this is just something I wanted to play with in general. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so both of those loaded. I guess we can just go into base and... Yep, yeah, reload. Um, let's take this example that was here and just see if we can run it, because if we can, we're already in a good place. And then we can start learning. Um, there's something called claw here, which is interesting. So let's see what that is. Um, I'm guessing it's already loaded. Let's just see. Claw. Yeah, there's something there already. I um, think this might be related to... Um, I think this might be his uh, borrowed a support of auto wrap. Let's have a look. Yes! Okay, so for generating uh, bindings to foreign libraries, etc. Awesome. Um, that's great. So apparently we need that as well in our package. So let's let's do that. I was just right. Where's package? Claw. And while I'm there, I prefer using IOPs, uh, UIOPs, defined package rather than def package, because it's just generally friendlier um, for live coding, because it doesn't freak out when you remove a package. Uh, let's see what we got here. Main, all the way down to here. Oof, this is not stream friendly code. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let's do it this way then. Compile this and run main. See what happens. Cool. Okay. That's already good. So what we've got in here is it's printing out um, positions and velocities of a ball. Um, and we can see that its position is, uh, is dropping and its velocity is increasing in the negative direction. So... Um, so yeah, that's roughly what we'd hope to see. And so it comes down to zero and then just keeps going. So there's no floor or anything like that set up yet. And it's stepping at, um, yeah, a fifth of a second at a time. Bit of a second? No. Anyway, it, <laughs> don't listen to me, I'm talking shit. Uh, yeah, it's stepping along. It's uh, calculating these new positions. That's a good sign. So job now really is, uh, now we know that the library is actually working. Um, loading blobs, would it work for Windows? I think it does. Um, let's. It really depends on if he's packaged up those libraries. Let's go to chipmunk blob. Let's. Uh, no. Really? Oh, okay. Uh, let's go to quick list and disks and software and what is it? Uh, chipmunk. What? Okay. Where's that then? Maybe it's actually put in the um, bodge. Oh. Well, I'm confused. See, this is where all the um, all the quick list software gets downloaded to. So I would have thought we would see bodge in here, unless it's coming from a unless it's coming from somewhere else. It's not coming from a different disk, does it? No, quick list archives installed. Um, well. Right, then, back to the code and we'll see what I've got. Um, base. Let's just jump to wherever this is, because it's obviously interesting. Okay, so, this is in local projects. Oh, oh, I've already checked it out before. Okay, that, this means this is likely an old version. Um, and that's not what I want to use. So, um, chipmunk. Actually, I'm gonna, yeah, so I'm going to delete this and 
I wonder where the blobs are coming from as well. Oh, there they are. That's no good. Let's start again. Actually, leave it split in half, seeing as we know how this is going to be in a second. Um, we're looking for chip play. Double check the ASD, make sure we've got the dependencies. Uh, and let's quick load chip play again. No package name claw. Okay, so that needs to be. It's interesting. I wonder if I had a local copy of that as well, because that could matter. Um, claw, yeah, there we are. Don't want all versions. Do not want that. Let's uh, do this again. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Right. Hey, Amphiana. I was saying I've been submitting more Vario issues for you to handle in your time off from your new gig. Thank you, dude. That's really cool. Um, I will. I will get to those. It is a uh, yeah. It's it's weighing on my mind, and I want to get to them. It's an interesting week. Tomorrow is uh, kind of Norwegian well Constitution Day, Independence Day. Um, so I'm going to be busy tomorrow, and then catching up on other days with work stuff. Um, but yes, I will get to it. It will be done. So yes, that's loaded. That's okay. Um, going to base. Let's just make sure the main still works. Freaking out that there is no main. What? Oh, maybe I never saved that. Okay. Main. Main runs. All good. Okay, so time to pull this apart and see what we've got. Um... So, uh, there's some caveats I should be fair to Borodust and show. He's saying, um, this is a translation from this C code. This is the C example code for Chipmunk. Um, and he's translated this into Common Lisp pretty much directly. So this is not idiomatic uh, Common Lisp. But it's here and it works. And so it's... Um, this library really is something you would want to build on top of and provide more kind of lispy abstractions on. Well, let's have a look, see what we've got. Um, okay, so there's a 2D vector. Um, this with free thing here. Um, this is a macro inside claw that's calling free, which is also inside claw, and it's it's calling C free, so this is all part of um, this is all handling foreign memory. So this is just making sure at the end of this block, it's going to free a um, yeah, free some um, memory from CFFI. I think it's from CFFI actually. That's the thing. Like uh, auto auto wrap, which uh, Claw was based on, had a bunch of its own um, machinery down there. It was using in a lot of places instead of CFFI, um, which is. I don't know, a little strange. I'm not sure what reasons there were at the time for um, that being necessary, because CFI is pretty full featured. But uh, yeah, is how it is. Let's have a look. So um, yeah, now we're in software and now we have um, chipmunk blob. Oops, chipmunk blob stable, here we go. So there's, um, yeah, 32 and 64 bits. And there's, oh yeah, so there's 32 bit DLL and there's a 64 bit DLL. So, have a max. It looks like this should be good for Windows and um, OS X and Linux. So that's awesome. Great work, that man. That's really cool to see. And you know it's going to be tested as well if Borrow Dust is doing it, so it's always always good news. Um, <laughs> I love the directory named Shitlogs. Yeah, it's a uh, one of those days where you're not in the mood to think up smart names for things. Okay, so here is a function that is um, allocating some memory. So let's just have a quick look at that to make sure we understand what's going on. So it's CPV, 
we do uh, 0 and 1, and they both have to be doubles by the look of it. And we get this, which appears to be an object wrapping a pointer. That is the standard fare for um, auto wrap and, I guess, claw by extension. Um, free called on this last object returns nothing, um, but will have freed this memory. So that's good. So that's as much as we expect. So we're creating a vector of um, minus 100 in the y coordinate. It's creating an empty space. Now, I had a brief peek at um, Chipmunk's general, uh, what is it, programming model uh, before the stream. And they have a few different kinds of bodies, and they also have spaces. And spaces just seem to be a, um, yeah, a region which you put a load of uh, bodies and things in and set the gravity of, and then you can simulate just that space. Um, I guess this is useful for having different regions in a game and you can only update the physics in um, individual regions. I'm not sure if there's any overlap there. I guess things don't collide between spaces. So let's have a look. There's a better description up here, yes. Spaces are containers for simulating uh, objects and chipmunk. You add bodies, shapes, and joints to a space, and then update the space as a whole. They control how all rigid bodies, shapes, and constraints act together. So that's cool. We need to keep an eye out for rigid bodies, which are the things that have the mass and rotation and position. Um, and then there's collision shapes, which you attach to the bodies to give it shape. So you add a few of those, and you can define uh, shapes by adding them up. Uh, and then constraints, which I haven't really read into yet, but yeah, like these mainly, I've, I've heard of these used before in collaboration with joints to describe, say, if there's a limit to how far a joint can open, for example. Okay, so they're creating a space. They're setting the gravity of the space to be that gravity we just created. Um... Add a static line segment shape for the ground. Ooh, interesting. Okay. We'll make it slightly tilted so the ball will roll off. We attach it to a static body uh, to tell Chipmunk it shouldn't be moved. Okay, movable, rather. With many free. That's an interesting naming for that, but sure. So, a couple more vectors. Um... I guess these are the endpoints of this line. So segment shape new. Um, you're getting a static body to so get static body from space. I guess this is allocating a new one. Because shape, when we were just looking at it before, was... Um, do, 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 where are we? Have I lost it so simple? How quickly? Um... Yeah, bodies, shapes, spaces. So we're making a body. We're attaching a shape, probably. Um, let's see if there's unlikely to be docs for this. No, that makes sense. Um, let's have a look. Is there any documentation here? So what are we looking for? Segment shape and things like that. Segment shape. Okay, when creating different types of shapes, you will need always be given back a shape uh, pointer. This is because chipmunk shapes are meant to be opaque types. Think of them as uh, specific collision types, such as uh, circle shape and segment shape and all that kind of stuff. Okay, fair enough. Then there's some friction set on it. There's um the segment shape new is interesting. I just wish I could see. Okay, here we go. Get body. Let's just do get static body. 
a dedicated static body for the space. You don't have to use it, um, but because its memory is managed automatically um, with the space, it's very convenient. Oh, nice. That's groovy. So that doesn't need to be freed in the end. I guess that's why it's not part of the with many free then. That explains that. And then this seems to be the way of attaching things, which is cool. So yeah, set some friction, add a shape. Oh, okay, nope, this isn't adding a shape. Segment shape new has to take a body and then it has to be, oh no, sorry, this is adding a shape. Never mind. So where was this meant to be? This was meant to be between Yeah, 5 and minus 5. What I'd like to do actually is uh, set this to 0 and run the simulation again because I'm interested in where it made contact. So it comes down and so yeah, it's dropping 9, 8, 7. Now this is where we were dropping at a reasonable rate here. We were going from 15, 14s, we had a few 14s. We had less 13s, less 12s, less 11, less 10s. 9s, 8s, not very many. And then suddenly a lot of 7s. So this suggests this is where it hit the line and uh, started rolling. And that's where also we start seeing uh, sideways movement as well. So yes, that will have hit that. That's good. That's good to see. Just needed to get that straight in my head, because if it was falling through the line, then there was something else for us to check. <laughs> Ethan P. Morgan, first one to call out the, the lack of beard. Uh, <laughs> fond of him, the beard is a, is a work. Um, oh, the beard is a word. Now, I'm actually more confused by your second edit. Um, yeah, it got too fucking warm here in Norway the other day. I was trying to get to sleep and it was just pissing me off, so it had to go. But it'll be back at breakneck speed as always, so. Won't be missing it for long. Right, let's have a look. Okay, so the shape... That's another point, actually. Yeah, the shape we made here. Had a radius of zero, which is strange. Now, I know this is just obviously based on what they did in a... Oh, I'm an idiot. Of course, this... Sorry. Yeah, this is the floor, so it doesn't need any radius. That's fine. It's just an infinitely thin line. And so this is setting us us up to do the ball. I really need to focus. <laughs> it's one of those days, man. I've just had a kind of like slamming my head against a wall kind of day. And so I just feel like, yeah, kind of like potty at the moment. So, radius, mass, moment. Moment of inertia is like mass for rotations. You can use cement moment for functions to help you approximate it. Cool. So, moment for a circle. Nice. Give it some details. Um, V0, I'm guessing this constant is a, uh, it's interesting that this is defined as a constant, but, oh no, it is a def var. I was going to just say that there are only certain kinds of, um, values you can actually have in a def constant. Um, so I was kind of interested to see how that was defined. So yes, they're calculating a value that's reasonable for a circle given this radius. And the space add functions return the thing that you are adding. It's convenient to create and add an object in one line. Space add body. That's interesting. Yeah, so this is different from our static body stuff. Intriguing. I guess the static body you can just add to the uh, the scene and like, add to the space and then deconstruct it all together. You're not going to be moving it around so you don't need to be holding onto that handle yourself. Hmm. That is interesting though. 
But saying that, they do use it. They use it immediately down here when setting the friction and the adding the shape, so... Not too sure of the difference yet. Um, let's have a look. And they set up a position for it and immediately ditch the position afterwards. It's kind of interesting as well that all this stuff is being done with uh, double doubles in the vectors, which is going to make it a little fiddly for me because all of the maths libraries, that, well, the maths library that I use is all about single floats, not double floats. So that's just going to be a, a little more farting around, a bit of conversions in a few more places than I'd like. But the precision, I'm sure, is is worth it. Okay, collision shape for the ball. Yes, you can create multiple collision shapes that point to the same body. Well, that makes sense. It will be attached to the body and move around and follow it. Okay, yeah, so you could have... I'm guessing it allows you to make more complex geometries just by adding a few primitive shapes together. And that's faster to simulate than some arbitrary mesh. And that's normally how I've seen it done anyway. Adding a shape. Circle shape new. Okay, so this is analogous to our segment shape new. And it does take the ball body, which was made up here. And it's just interesting, I guess, that in this case they were adding and... Um, yeah. Creating the uh, body and adding the body at the same go, I think. Nope, nope. They're making the, bo the uh, body there and then adding it. No, I'm, I'm talking rubbish. Oh, it's this bit that was saying it was convenient to create and add an object in one line. Space, add, body... Oh, I see. So, like, yeah, I'm just reading too much into this. This is just like they're saying, hey, we return the thing that you pass in because, yeah, that's handy. Yeah, well, that's fine. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. So that's it. Now we just need to... Yeah, we're going to step in 60 of a second. We're going to run it for a while. And we're going to do this, let's see, with position... CP vect. What was that? Oh no, C with. This is going to be a type. Let's jump to there and. Oh, this is one thing I do find difficult with um, uh, auto wrap and with, um, with claw by extension is that everything's hidden inside this macro that does loads of magic, which is very cool in that it generates loads of code for you. Um, but the tricky part is. It just like when I'm trying, I, I jump to definitions all the time to find out information, and this is just a wall. Uh, one other way of doing this is done by CFFI has a. So CFFI is the foreign function interface. There is a library called C2FFI, which um, uses LVM to pass header files and all that kind of stuff and give you a specification. Um, if we look in spec, we can see one of these here. So let's just do PC ah, Linux. So this is some. This is what the information that will have been dumped out by C two FFI. So there is a library from CFFI called CFFI hyphen C two FFI, and what that does is it uses that information to generate. Um, bindings just like this is kind of doing but doesn't do it from a macro um, it just generates lisp files and then you add them to your project it's kind of nice because then you can jump to definition and see all the types however we can just macro expand this we didn't expand as far as I thought we would which is interesting um, let's expand this oh there we are that's looking a bit more uh, familiar but it's a bit fiddly, you know? You're like, when, as soon as you want to find something out, then you're having to macro expand a couple of times and then... Um, yeah, go searching through this. So here we can see a foreign record has been defined and that's essentially a struct, which is also wrapped up by claw. Interesting. So yep, it's just... 64-bit X and 64-bit Y. That makes sense. Nothing special to see here. Q. 
Cool. All right, so. There's also some nice functions for getting the values from a given body. Oh, it's interesting that this... Uh, Ah, uh, so you pass in... Ah, oh, that's what's going on here. So we're creating... These are uh, out arguments in uh, in C. So you allocate a, a vector, and then you pass that in, and that's going to get populated by this function, and then you can read the data from that. And so that's what this stuff is doing here, which is interesting. So you can... Oh, that's kind of neat format, actually. So once you've done C with, I'm guessing this has a... Uh, symbol macro let. I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking of a. Um... Oh, I suppose that might be it actually. Okay, yeah, they they're using symbol macro let to. Oh, one second. I'm trying to work out where this syntax comes from because this looks like to be getting the x and y coordinates from. Um, the x and y slots from this foreign struct. And it's a neat syntax, and I would have expected... Oh, yeah, there we go, macro let. I was thinking there would be a... Um... Why is that going right out of my head? I guess maybe I was thinking of symbol macro let. But, yeah, something like this. So, yeah, this is going to expand to cref of the um, slot name. All right. Fine. That makes sense. So we know when we see this, we can use this kind of syntax to get at the values inside, inside structs. Ugh, what a mouthful. And then space step. Yeah, you just step it by the time step. That's really cool. So what it would be neat to do is if we could just hack in um, some basic graphics. I'd like to be able to draw the line. I'd like to, Well, I'd like to be able to draw the ball first, just so we can see it move. Um, and then... Yeah, go from there. <laughs> hey, Veridus, how you doing, man? Thanks so much for making this, by the way. This, you've done a cracking job. Uh, just getting myself familiar with things at the moment. And also with uh, taking a peek at Claw, because I haven't haven't really used that properly before. I've just pulled it, and it's just worked. And yes, you have missed previous... Um, Decryals of the lack of beard. <laughs> right, let's have a go then. So let's get the REPL. Let's just pull in one of the Keppel backends. We'll be using SDL2 as usual. And seeing as we may as well. I'm going to want to push this project online soon. It's possible, actually, that this is going to be a shorter episode in general. I'm not sure how long things are going to take. Um, so if we if we finish sooner, we'll, we'll wrap up sooner. So let's have a look. What I would also like is Nineveh. Because there are the uh, sign distance, um, 2D sign distance functions. Um, in there, and we can use that as a, just a really simple way of drawing things like spheres, well, things like uh, circles and rectangles and shit like that. Probably some lines in there. <laughs> I hope you're still talking about beard spawn, Pim. Right. Um, Nineveh. Okay, what else do we need to do? I suppose actually have have a look at the functions in Nineveh, seeing as I don't document things properly. Well, I haven't documented things properly in this library. So SDF2D is where everything is. So let's just see what's in that. Cool. Well, let's see if we can just use this um, directly in our in our project chip play package. If this doesn't clash with anything... Idiot, that's not what it's called. That's what it's called. That doesn't seem to clash anything with anything good. So now we just need to remember how to use it. Um, ah, 
how do I do things? Well, the first thing I suppose I want to do is... Um, seeing as other people are going to use this, let's just do... the with float traps mask because Kevl does this really disgusting but like thing of just masking out um float errors anyway so uh that's not actually necessary it does it at the top level which is bad and i should probably fix it but i can't stand getting exceptions for for float stuff you're right i didn't update <laughs> in it good stuff me but better stuff to Ho 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 Man, who is the real hero of this stream. Okay, so let's go down to that loop. Also kind of interesting, we don't need to be allocating these every time. I wouldn't have thought. I think we can just move this out to here. Um, that should be fine. Let's uh, make sure things still work. Whoa. What the fuck? That didn't just start up another one, did it? Ah! I didn't even know that would work like that. Mmm, dear. <laughs> I just found out something about Keppel I didn't realize. That's odd. Fair enough. I'm going to have to get distracted by that now and have a look. So, Keppel dot... Uh... <laughs> Where is that going to be? Um, Kettle surfaces? Of the current context? Yeah, it seems we've got two windows now. Hmm. Fair enough. But which one's going to get updated when we start drawing stuff? Bah. I should be able to kill one of these windows, but, but uh, I wonder which one's current. I don't know. That is interesting. I will start messing around with it and we'll see. Um, whoops. Oh yeah, we're going to want to use Kepler as well. Oh, this is going to get annoying. Oh, okay. There will be a conflict between ah, Free and Kepler and Free and Claw. That is annoying. Okay, so we will just abort and have to reference Kepler for now. Which is fine. Capital CLS. Yes. Set. Clear. Color. Um, nope. Muscle memory is fucked now. Um, no point. Not three. No point. Not, not three. No point. Not five. Not. Oh, just one. And let's do that. Is that not correct? Oh, yes, of course. We're not going to have. Ah, there's lots of things that isn't loaded right now, that aren't loaded right now. RDG math, let's go and see if it's going to be okay having that. Because that's just helpful to me. There we go. Okay. Oh, there's going to be a lot of errors because all my muscle memory is assuming that um, Keppel is already... Okay, that's the current one. Um, I'm just going to put the second window uh, down behind my face and just see what... Um... Okay. So what? It, what is the current surface right now? Current surface for the context is this one. And if we go back and look at surfaces... Okay, so this first one here is the one we want to free. So we should be able to do... Have we got close window or... Nope. Um, 
something to do with surface. Can we remove surface? Current surface? Make surface current? Remove surface. There we go. Remove surface. Uh, the first of the last things. And I didn't like that. What am I missing? Oh, the first thing should be a context. So we will get the current context. Good. It's gone. Nice. All right. I always get a little twitchy around the surface stuff because the multiple windows and multiple context thing is something I'm not, I haven't tested as heavily as a lot of other stuff. So it's, uh, yes, yeah, always a bit nerve wracking to see what's going to come out of that when I try and use it. Um, anyway, so we will go down to here. And we're going to use one of the um, macros that comes with Nineveh, which is called asframe. Um, it's just a lazy. It's a lazy macro. All it does is if we expand this, you'll see at the top it does clear and at the bottom it does swap. That's it. Everything else is just your code. Um, okay, so that's as frame, but we don't want it out there. We want it inside here. Um, and let's just run main again to make sure it hasn't caught fire. And we see now that ran a lot slower, and the reason is that we've got um, um, VSync turned on, so we're getting capped at 60 frames a second now. So that was that delay. And now we've got to try and work out how to draw something, and I really wish I could remember the API. Um, so, well, I mean, the first thing we're going to need some basics. We're going to need a GPU function. Um, which is some basic vertex shader. It's going to take a vert, which is a vec2, and nothing else. And it's going to return two values. It's going to return um, this is a vec4, and then it's going to return um, its uh, turned into UV coordinates, so from 0 to 1. So we're just doing some remapping here, 0.5. So we compile that, that's okay. We keple def on G and make a simple fragment shader. Again, this is just going to be a full screen quad. Um, something we've done plenty of times. And for now, we'll just return red uh, so we can test that it's working. Def pipeline G. Um, it's a real shame that uh, that free that free method collides, and it's kind of stupid. Like I, I'm annoyed that I picked that as the method name. It might be nice if we just. It's one of those areas like how do you have everyone use a similar uh, method name? I mean, you could make it as a separate library just with the generic function definition, but. Ugh. Um, yep, yep. We'll see. Anyway, so basic uh, pipeline. And we're just going to take a couple of things. We're going to be using the um, first GPU function as our vertex shader and our second one as our fragment shader. Now, um, for the home gamers, if you haven't seen before, um, because there's only two uh, shaders in this pipeline, that it's being assumed that they're being used for the vertex and fragment shader, but you can set it explicitly that this one is vertex and this one is fragment. Um, but yeah, when there's two, it's implicit, so that's all it takes. So that's compiled. So now we want to um, draw with this. We'll go down here and we will uh, map something over that pipeline. So it's going to be called basic pline. Um, we are going to map over it. There is a function inside Nineveh that will give you a um, stream of vertices which are a quad. So we'll just do Nineveh um, get quad stream v2. There, words. I think that's all we need. Oh no, it's complaining. Undefined function map g. True, it's Kepler map g. I will not get used to that. Okay, so now if we run it, 
Uh, we can see that down here we've got this red square. This is going to be the size of the current viewport. Keppel, current viewport. We can see is 320 by 240, which is obviously this region. And uh, I need coffee. And so now all we need to do is That's a couple of things to do. First thing to do is um, make this a little more interesting. Let's just draw a circle here. And then we'll pass in the position of the ball so we can move it. Yeah, we'll go from there. So um, in that 2D, in that Nineveh SDF 2D thing, what were our options? Well, we want to use circle, um, and I'm going to use uh, control VV to bring up the overloads that are available, and we can see that it's going to take a position um, and a radius. Now, if I remember correctly, the position is in um, screen space, so when, like, how do you say it? View space, not view space. Ah, words. Sometimes called window space. Um, a viewport space is probably more accurate, but yeah, we're, we're going to get them in viewport space coordinates. Um, so for that, we really need to know the size of the viewport, I would expect. Oh no, I suppose we can use, um, oh, what's that? What's the GL variable? GL, um... oh yes, of course, we won't have that pulled in yet. One second. Um, I'm just going to go and add another thing to our package, which is the Vari language, which is our shader language. Um, so, where was I? Oh yeah, position. So there is a GL something. Um, I, I guess it's frag chord. Um, frag chord. Let's have a look at the documentation for that. Contains the window relative coordinates of the current fragment. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Um, oh, wait a second. Uh, what are they? Oh, yes. It's a VEC4. And we only need a VEC2. So let's just do uh, XY is... And we're going to swizzle this down to just grab the X and Y coordinates. And we'll put these in um, as the first argument, because this is looking for a vec2 and a radius. And then we'll just put 20 as the second, and we'll see what we get. And at the moment, see, we're not getting an immediate response over here, um, because we're doing things in a slightly different way to normal. Um, the way we normally structure our projects is we get a main loop going, and then we just write code. And because the main, the main loop is still running, whenever we compile something, we see that change immediately. Um, but now we have this main loop down here that loops a few times and then quits. So we need to run main again each time we want to see a change. And we can see down there that there is, well, looks like a quarter of a circle there, which is a good start. Um, so let's try and position it somewhere. Um, we don't need this, seeing as we actually brought this into this package anyway. Um, I just want to know how to set the position of this guy. So we've got to rotate, so there must be a position. Come on, where are you? Got masks and merges and merge smooths and rectangles, rotate. Oh, I guess that's stupid. You don't, don't need that. You can just add. Mm, but it would be nice to have a helper on this because think we'll find that you actually have to subtract from the position to move it um, in the direction we would expect add to go. One second, let's just uh, jump to rotate clockwise. Blah. What the fuck? Right. Um, oh yeah, there is a translate. Is that not exported? Let's go see. SDF 2D. 
translate is there, so I just wasn't seeing it. So let's go and look. Is there a translate? Of course there is. There we go. Translate. And buy some offset. So let's just do this. We'll do 100 by 100. Let's see what we get from that. And it's freaking out! So we're getting, so one of the things that can be a little confusing when we're working with Keppel is um, that sometimes you'll get an error that doesn't seem to make sense. It's like, geofrag code is undefined. Of course, it it is defined, but only for fragment shaders. So a GPU function in itself doesn't know what stage it belongs to. It can be used in any stage or called from any other GPU function. So when it's being compiled, um, it checks to see if there's any stage where it would make sense. And if there's no stage it would make sense, then it throws an error um, to let you know what cases um, it's found. So for this uh, function can't be used in vertex or tessellation or geometry or compute stages because in those stages glfrag code is undefined. But if we were in a fragment stage, it's a different error. Um, it's just saying that there's no um, applicable method for translate when called with float and vec2, which is correct. Um, because what we should actually be doing is translating the XY, not the circle. And that's just down to how this API is defined. So let's do this, let's do this, get rid of that error and compile and everything's groovy again. So then we run and we can see we have our circle. At the moment, I think this just returns the kind of, it creates the sign distance field. So, um, there's also a couple of things that are strange here. Why is that background red still? I would have expected that to have been... Oh, this is this is to do with the fact that, that this is a distance field. Um, we're returning a float. If we make this a VEC4, this should now all be white. Right, so we're getting the distance... Um, assigned distance field uh, generates the distance um, from the edge of the shape. So here, this is black because all the values are negative and the white are all at one or greater. Um, There's a very thin line on the edge, kind of anti-aliased as it transitions between zero and one there. Um, but that's why we're seeing white everywhere. So what we need to do is we need to mask it, I think it was called, um, mask. Fill. Um, and I need to look up the definition for this again. Okay, it just takes it just takes the uh, distance field. And then there was a way of using this and I can't quite remember it. So what I think I'm going to do is have a quick peek at one of my other projects. Um, and it would have been Fraggle. I'm pretty sure I've got some um, some things in here. Let's have a look. What is this? Um, other than fantastic commit names. Um, this is graph stuff. Perl and noise things. Um, is there any other sign distance stuff in here? SDF? No. Well, SDF is used, so let's just see if there's a circle or something. No? No masking? No. Okay. So hopefully there is... Oh, I didn't want that. I wanted to have a look at branches um, and there was an SDF branch. We've checked that out and now I can go and have a look at that code and see what's what. Okay, so how were they using mask? How was I using mask? Um, okay, so we were mixing between two colors um, using the result of mask fill as the amount. So, let's try that. So we'll take our background color, um, which is not this, I'm in the wrong file again. Um, okay, here. We're gonna use this as our um, I will just call it A. Fantastic variable names. 
Um, we'll just do mix between our whatever our current background color is. Um, clear color. I put Keppel in front of it. And let's just start making it uh, mostly red. Mix between those two using um, A as the amount. Pretty sure that's correct. Let's compile it and it's not correct. Um, X, Y is undefined. That does make sense because we need to use a let star instead of just a regular let. Um, let's bring this down to the next line so it's a little friendlier for the stream. Um, you cannot call uh, vec4 when you're passing in a vec4. So that's unnecessary. So let's get rid of that. And rid of that. That was an old error. And now it's compiling. So let's run main again. And now we can see that we have our sphere. So let's make this guy a little smaller. Cool. Um, let's give ourselves a uniform, which is going to be position. And that's going to be a vec2. Um, this will be interesting. Um, And yeah, I wonder actually if I use um, our regular um, vector function, if we pass it ints, it's fine. What if we pass it doubles? Okay, good. It is creating a. So both of those should be um, single floats. Is that how type of is done, or is it? Oh, well, let's try it. Oh, yes, of course. Map. First. Single float, single float, good. That's all right. That's important because we're going to have to pass this up to this fragment shader, and I was wondering if I should use a dvec or just a regular vector. We can get away with a regular vector too. So now this is compiled, our pipeline will have automatically been updated. Um, so we'll go down to here. I will split things again. Come down here. Where are we? So we draw here. Let's do this after all this. And we're going to let x be... Well, actually, we can just do... pos be the vector... x and y. The body is at... this. And we'll put pos here. Oops, a bit much. Like that. No warnings. Good. And then we should just be able to pass position in here. And let's run main and see what we get. Jack shit. And there's a good reason for that. Let's uh let's jump up there to our um pipeline again. We pass in the position, we do absolutely nothing with it. And well, we should be using it um for translate. Now let's run it. And there it is. Just it was a bit small, but something did happen down there. We need to make this a bit bigger and get some action going on. Right. A few things. We would like to be using the full space that we've got here. Um so let's set the size of our current viewport to be the size of the surface, the current surface. Do, 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 do. We can do that. Actually, we'll do that in the loop. Ah, no, we won't bother doing it in the loop. We'll just do it uh, beforehand. Do so set the viewport resolution. Oh, the capital viewport uh, resolution of the capital current viewport to be the size of the capital Surface resolution of the Keppel current surface. Cool. Something like that. Oops. Let's uh, bring that back out again. Okay, so it's probably like a uh, 
The whole space is now taken up, but everything's still a bit small and hard to see, so let's beef up the numbers a bit. Um, let's just go to position and times it by 10. Well, let's set this up so it's a little easier to see on the stream again. And uh, we'll times the position by 10 and run main. Cool. So... That is rather cool. Oh, well, our viewport's still not completely updated. That's interesting. We'll find out why soon. Right, now we can actually see what's going on. These, uh, The log is a little less useful. So let's go and get rid of that. And run this guy again. It drops down. Um... I'm going to move this guy inside. Ow, no, we'll get, yeah, we'll just put it inside the dude. Why not? We'll come back to this soon. Um, but it's dropping. It's hitting that line uh, that we're not currently drawing. And it's rolling down it. Which is excellent. Um, it would be kind of cool if we could set it to bounce a little. Um, so let's have a look at what we could fiddle to make that more likely. Um, let's just set the mouse, mouse down really low and see what happens. If we run main now... Oh, it just drops and rolls. It's got absolutely nothing there. Um, is that going to be the friction? It's unlikely, isn't it? Let's set the friction to zero. Nope. I just wondered if it was like almost gripping the ball as it hit it. But okay, we'll work with this and we'll get further along. Uh, Pomda been saying the amount of comments and the clarity in the example provided by um, uh, provided by uh, Borodust and uh, vicariously um, Chipmunk are impressive, and they absolutely agree. It's really nice to see just a just a good clean C library with. Good comments. It's just, yeah, really nice. Catch you later, Borodust. I know that was a few minutes ago, but you might see on the stream. Okay. Very unimpressive demo, and it's kind of annoying that, um, obviously, we have to keep resetting it, so I want to get this into a place where we can just run it continuously. Um, so, rather than doing this we can add a few things let's I'm gonna do a couple of things just for myself um, the time then while I just like this being uh, keywords which slightly change the indentation and um, just make things a bit more visible to me because they're highlighted differently um, I would like to what would I like to do I would like to step the host. Um, step host is there. So we can put that in. That's why the uh, viewport wasn't resizing. Uh, yeah, because we weren't. Uh, step host um, basically pumps the event queue of whatever host you're using, in our case, SDL. Um, so we wouldn't have been getting keyboard or mouse inputs in that window, and we also wouldn't have got. Um, any uh, window resize events. So that's why that wasn't happening. So we do that. Another thing that we like having is uh, live support. It, uh, we use this for catching. We do use it for a couple of things. The first one is update the REPL link. This is uh, what gets us, what keeps the REPL working while um, we're stuck inside this main loop. Um, if you notice right now, um, if we go here and run main, we can't do anything until this finishes, and then we have control again. This line is what um, behind the scenes is pumping the message queue for um, for slime, for swank, uh, which keeps all this going. So that's awesome. And then the last thing is we're always going to make mistakes. So um, what we want to be able to do is catch those errors. Um, so the way I'm going to do this... The way I prefer doing this is um, we're going to have a, a function called uh, step demo, and we're going to move this logic, this core stuff. 
We'll leave step host here because that's mm, unlikely to be a major problem that we're worried about. Same with REPL link. We'll move this stuff. Up to here. And then we are going to compile that. It's going to complain about a bunch of things. Um, saying that these variables are undefined. Um, ah, yes, and these functions aren't going to work now. That's interesting. Ah, it's a little bit annoying, actually. I would normally factor it out like this. Hmm. What to do, what to do. Ah, we don't have to worry about performance yet. <laughs> we'll move this inside. Um, okay, so. Um, I want to know which ones aren't used. POS and BELL aren't used. That makes sense. Okay, so that's happy now, so we need to pass in these arguments down here. Uh, and we're passing them into step demo. Um, and we're just going to wrap this in a live support uh, continual. I'm actually going to do the same thing for step host, just in case anything funky happens in there. It's unlikely, but it's all right. So yeah, compile this, and then we want to change this to while, or rather until, no, it will do it while, while running. So we need to make a variable for that, so let's just do def var running is nil. Um, we will wrap an unwind protects around this because we're going to want to set uh, running to nil. Basically, if we abort, if we have an exception and it's caught here, which is going to give us a chance to continue, we might still say no, terminate. And then it's going to leave this scope and we want to set running to nil in that case. So what we're going to do here is an unwind protect to make sure that definitely happens. So we will say set of running nil. And it still doesn't know about running because I didn't compile this. That's a little better. Um, and then we just need to, before this starts, set f running to true. And that should be it. Now let's just make a little helper function just called uh, stop demo, which will set f running to nil um, and just for clarity we'll go if it's running set it to nil otherwise just print uh, wasn't running okay so now we should be able to say main and the ball is going to roll down it's going to roll off the end and disappear um, and now it's gone but we have control of our REPL and so what we're going to want to be able to do is start setting the position ourselves. So, what time are we at? We're just at one hour now. I'm not sure, like, uh, this is basically where, roughly where I wanted to actually get to, which was just uh, getting things started up. Burridus has returned, um, and is talking about CVAL. Oh, yes, yes, I could just use CVAL directly, that's correct. That's a good point, uh, but I'm being lazy. Um, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, we were going to look at setting the position of this guy. So this amounts to teleportation. There is a section on that in here. Teleportation. Okay, so a physics engine um, to handle collisions needs to know where you were and where you've gone to. Um, when you set a position, you're effectively teleporting something there. Like, and... So if you teleport somewhere and then you're colliding, the best the physics engine can do is push you apart to try and stop the collision. Um, but this gives a really bad 
feeling to your collision. So generally what you want to do is, rather than setting a position, you want to change the velocity and let the physics engine take care of location. However, in our case, we're going to want to keep bringing this guy back up and positioning it somewhere that we can see it. So, we need to find out how to do that. Um, I'm assuming, actually, seeing as we've got a, there was a, a well-named get um, position here, uh, there's probably a set position as well. Let's have a look. Do CB body set position. Uh, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna have to enable concurrent hints. Um, this is something that keeps the mini buffer working um, even while you're in a main loop as well. It's done on a separate queue or a separate thread to um, the REPL. So yeah. So it needs a body and a position, and the position is going to be one of these vectors again. Um, which is interesting. So let's have a look. And very quickly, we're going to want to start moving some of these things out into... For now, in this little play session, we're going to move them out to global variables. But obviously, in, in real projects, you'll have it somewhere else. Um, but yes, we're going to want to be able to set the position. We're going to do something like this. Down here, I'm going to say new pos, and we're going to, let's just have a quick look at the definition of this. No, there's no documentation. Oh, no. Okay. We'll set the position of the body, which in this case is the ball body, um, to our new position. Currently, we've only allocated the new position. So we need to set it, and here is where we can use that C val that um, Boradus was just telling us about. No, we don't even need to do that, do we? We can use pos x and set it to... What were the starting positions we used? Let's see if we can get it back to the starting position. The value. The, 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 the. Position. There we go. Right there. Oh yeah, that's a good point. We don't we don't need to create it and then ah fool of a took. Right. With free. New pos. Maybe do it properly. Do that and that's interesting. I would have expected that to bring the ball back, but um possibly not. Let's just check that this is still running. That's good. Um, there are also similar ways, just like going into your fragment shader and just making sure that it always returns red. Then you know it's still going. Um, so this should have set the position. Of body to be the new position, which was meant to be 0 and 15. Set it at 30 and 15. See, at this point, it should just be continuously setting it back to a position up here somewhere. Um, but it's not. And then when we comment this out, it would actually allow it to fall again. It's interesting. Let's see where the ball has got to. Um, it's possible. Oh, yeah. Okay, time is unbound. Um, we actually only really want pos right now. Um, whoa, that's a lot. Okay, easy, tiger. What the fuck? Oh yeah, one second. Make sure you have a new line, otherwise things can get rather confusing. So, we are currently at minus 90,000 and falling. So our ball is still going, but it's rather off screen. I'm just a bit surprised that the, well, to be fair, 
I haven't read any of the documentation. I just assumed set position would work. We should actually go and find out um, when you can use that and stuff like that. Um, if we uncomment this and compile it, huh? Oddly enough, now it's hovering around minus six hundred. I have an idea why. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at its velocity. Because it's probably phenomenally fucking high at this point. Um, why am I worried about its x velocity? We know the velocity that we actually care about is the... Uh... Yeah, check this out. Minus 40,000. So we're, we are resetting it successfully to around here somewhere. But it's going down so fast it's immediately minus 600 below. So... Forget that. We also need to reset the velocity as well. So if we do this, set velocity, um, and we need a velocity. Oh yeah, it's with three. Oh, it's something like with many free. I do not like that naming, but oh well. Um, new velocity is. Zero and zero. Oops. There it is. I can see it. See it with my beady eyes. Okay. So now what we should be able to do is comment this out and let go, and boom, and off it falls. And we reset it again, and we comment it out again. Whee! Okay. So doing that in the code is kind of sucky, so we're going to need to be able to access the ball from outside, which means making it, either creating a handle to get at it in some way, like queuing up. One way you could do is you could have a, a, like event queue for the ball and you would set a reposition event or something like that and process that. We're in a tiny little example demo, but this really doesn't matter. So let's just make it global and uh, go from there. So, body, the ball body, here we are. Um, we would like to make this global. So actually let's, for now we can just do set of Ball body to be, um, yeah, to be ball body. And we'll make it, no, no, we'll leave it. We'll just replace it each time. It'll get freed down here. So actually, yeah, for that reason, let's go down here and say, set it to nil. Hacky hackiness, gotta love it. Right, ball body. Boop. Def file, full body, nil. We compile this. Uh, we're going to say stop demo. And then we're going to run main again. And then we should have ball rolls down, disappears. But this time we have ball body. And so what we can do is go and make ourselves a little helper function, which is going to be called, well, it's going to have this code. Reset ball. And we're going to say let's ball body is ball body. And then we should be able to just call reset ball each time. And you are now at our control. So that's awesome. So this is really drawing the ball. So we could just do, um, hmm. Yeah, I'm just thinking about this. So if we want to draw many things, I mean, we could just hard code the line. We can pass in the line coordinates and we can draw a line. That would be easy to do. Um, but then maybe we want to add another ball and another ball. Like I suppose. 
like if we were going to do this in a general way this would be a really shitty solution um so yeah we're not going to worry about that uh for the purposes of this stream again we're not going to be doing this for much longer so let's just just hack some more things in so we'll just do line uh, and we're going to pass in a vec4 and we're going to use the first two components for the um for one end of the line and the other two components for the other end of the line so let's go down here where is that line stepped over the line okay these two Actually, let's just do this. Uh, line is like this, like this. Then we can just say x, y. What? No. X of line, y of line, z of line, uh, w of line. Compile that, and it freaks out because I thought this was a let, and it's not. It is a with many free, because I wasn't looking. What? Um, yeah. Even more nesting. This code wasn't idiomatic to begin with, and it's definitely not now. Um, okay, so it wants them, it needs them to be double floats. That makes sense. So, we can make this even uglier. Floor. So the float function converts numbers into floating point format. The second, the optional second argument is a template, uh, which must be a float. Um, and it will, if it's a double float here, then this will be converted to a double float. If it's a single float here, this will be converted to a single float. So that's all we're doing there. So we're taking these values and that's that. Right, so now when we do our drawing, where's our step ball? Let's just also pass in line. Um, let's go to this, tick the line. Um, now this is freaking out because um, it's trying to call step demo, which takes four arguments with three arguments. And even though we've updated this code, there's already a main loop running that's using this code. And this is why I like having a very small main loop that's calling out as early as possible and um, doing everything else elsewhere because it just makes it, it like if you recompile the main loop you're going to have to stop and start it again so what we're going to do is we're going to do it in abort uh, if our code was correct we should now not be running which is good and just compile again to make sure and run main so then everything is running let's go and Call that with line. So now we're uploading that vector four to our GPU code. So what we should be able to do is um, draw a line. Um, I'm going to create a variable called D. That's going to be our circle. It's kind of our density uh, or distance. So no change so far. Um, what I would like to do then is there was some function for um, mixing these, and I can't remember what I called it. sdf 2 d and there is something called merge. Okay, so merge, 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 simple. Looking at the arguments, it just takes two floats, and these are meant to be the results of two sine distance functions and combines them together. So we're going to take the circle and we're going to take line. Um, let's go and have a look at how line is defined. It takes the xy just the same as everything else. Um, it is going to take the start and end vectors. So we will swizzle um, line to get xy. And we're going to swizzle it again uh, to get ZW. And then line width is going to be 5. Now, there's a small problem here. Uh, we do have a little line right down here. But um, we multiply uh, the position of the ball by 20. So we also need to uh, multiply the position of this line 
uh, by 20 as well. So we should move this up here actually. We should do pos is times pos 20 and get rid of this. And line should be line times 20. That's rather horizontal. Oh, ZY, ZW. There we go. So now, when we reset our little uh, ball, it should... <laughs> it should roll down that beautiful line that we just created, but it did not. Not in the slightest. Thy? What did I do? It's quite a way off. That was quite far off. It suggests that... Hmm. <laughs> I'm probably thinking incorrectly about these multipliers. Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, that looks pretty sensible. Huh. Right, quick check of the chat, seeing as I haven't been uh, looking for it a little bit. Hey, Lovelike Semtex, good to see you, ma'am. Uh, body radius, I mean shape radius. What? Is that what I'm missing? Oh, could it be that massive? It's possible, actually. Yeah, like the, the uh, oh yeah, the multipliers are probably fucking up all the, yeah, of course it is, of course it is. Good point, that man. Yeah, it's gonna be five times 20. Um, yeah, because the radius, <laughs> yeah, so the radius is five. Um, and then we have to times that by 20 as well. Uh, Nope. Wait a second, that's... We're not even using that value, Chris. Don't be an idiot. Like, actually use it before you say, no, it definitely doesn't work. I can tell because of the way it is. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice. A little bit of penetration there through the line. But other than that, not bad. Not bad. Okay, so of course that is way too huge. So we should uh, fuck around with these values, change some things about. Um, one thing to do, of course, is not multiply everything by 20. Don't really need to do that. We can, um, let's go and mess with things down here. Multiply them in place. So, uh, obviously 20 by 20 is 400. So that's 400. And five times 20 is 100. That's right, I think. <laughs> That'll do. Um, so that's the line, the ball scaled. We need to position it a lot more appropriately because, yeah, where is this? Don't test my brain. Thank you, lazy bastard. Right, okay, so let's stop demo uh, and run main again. It did not work. That was not smart. Oh yes, we can tell it's 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 half past nine now, so it's time to start fucking things up. Time to start breaking things, make everything go wrong. Uh, what did I do? Oh, one thing we need to do as well is where's our reset ball? Um, it's uh, twenty-five times twenty is five hundred. Just being lazy, but I don't trust my brain to work when I'm on stream. 
ever. There it is. I can see it. There's a tiny ball rolling down here. There it goes. So it'd be quite good if we could pass up the radius. And again, this creation process being locked up inside main here is what's causing us to have to restart. Um, but let's, let's screw around a bit more. Um, this is going to start getting a little fiddly because it is. Um, again, it's all down to things being packed up in here that's going to make this ugly. But we will endure. Where, where's line? Uh, line. Here. This is our line. So let's do a second line. Well, line two. Um, a and B. Where are A and B used? Okay, so we got this. Where is ground used? It's used there and then freed at the end. Okay, so let's let's take this. Turn that and A and B. Yeah, is A used anywhere else? No, it's only in this creation process that we need it. Good, so these guys are going to move um, up here. And we're going to go and find a line. Oh, fucking hell. We're going to do everything wrong. No, no. Stop. I just want to learn how to do this reliably. There we go. Um, line V4. That's all I was trying to do. Doing it slowly. Right. And we need to pass in space as well. So... Okay, so now we can come down here. Line zero is make line. Okay, it's actually this one's currently called ground. And we can get rid of all this and get rid of these two and get rid of this. Cool. So that should be kosher, except it's not. It wants exactly two because we're meant to pass in space. And that's good. So what I'd like is to have ground and ground one. Um, well, we're going to actually make these line one and line zero. And it's going to freak out because it doesn't know what to do. Um, interesting. Did I just screw that up? Oh, yes. Um... Yeah, we don't have the line template anymore, so... Um, line 0 v4 is this... Yeah. Line 0 v4. Um, line 1 v4. And we'll get to why we're doing this this way soon. Right, is that going to be okay? No, nope, because that needs to be star. And then it's still malformed. Why are you malformed? Oh yes, because I've moved space up here, which is not smart. Space is meant to be here. And then these aren't used apparently, but they will be soon. Uh, free ground is now free line zero and line one. Uh, this is now ah fuck line zero and line one, and it's the V4 versions of course because oh, man the typing just gets better and better. Um, 
Line zero, V4, line one, V4. We're gonna do this. It's gonna freak out that it's the wrong number of arguments. We're gonna say abort, which has stopped rendering over there, but we haven't cleared yet, so that's gonna hang around for a while. And it's gonna complain that this isn't being used, and also that uh, there isn't a variable called line, so we're passing that in now. Uh, let's change some more things. We'll say line zero and line one. Um, freaking out because it doesn't know about line down oh, ho, ho, ho. it's better to search for a thing that exists right line zero do that so okay that is happy now and then we can come down here and we can also use line zero and line loin Open the loins right uh line one v4 okay is that kosher? Have I decided anything wrong? Um, now, the next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to have a second line. Basically, I want to drop the ball here, have it roll down one line, fall onto the other line, and roll down. Simple stuff, but it would be a nice thing to end the stream on. So, um, it's going from... It's going from minus 400 to 400. Interesting. Um, so line one is going to be going from, let's just say 50, um, 300 to, yeah, 400 and 400. Let's just see what that ends up looking like. Uh, up here, we're going to need another line, which and this is where stuff starts to get really ugly. This function only takes two arguments, which means we need to do another merge. We're going to merge the two lines together, and then we're going to merge uh, that result with the next thing. Kind of be, it'd be really nice to have reduce and sequences and all that kind of stuff. But for me to do it in the way I want to do it, I really wanted to add... Um, oh, what's the... Oh, the feature's gone right out of my head now. Um... Oh, God damn it! Um, not generics. Oh, what does Rust use? This is really infuriating that names are going out of my head now as well. And there's no coffee left. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just see if we can get this working. And then I'll try remember. Traits! Traits! There we go! Traits! I want to add traits to the, uh, to Vario, the compiler. Um, that would be awesome. Okay, there's another line. Nice. Because it would be nice to be able to have um, properly typed containers. They're a bit more generic. And um, yeah, that kind of stuff. So let's uh, reset the ball. Where's our reset ball? We're going to put this now instead of it for here. We're going to put it at 600. We're going to put it at 300 or so. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, let's run main. It's dropping down on that side, and now we're going to go reset all. Now it's going to drop from here, it's going to land on this. It's going to roll down, and then it's going to fly off the end of the screen, and we'll never see it again. Uh, so we need to change that line, which means, again, stopping the demo, which is horrible. So we need to go and change this. Um, change it to 150, and compile that. And... Run, and reset the ball. And it's still going to be off screen, but is it is that line off screen as well? Apparently not. <laughs> Damn it! It's weird because this is minus four hundred. I thought that would have been no problem. I thought that would be off there somewhere, but apparently not. Um... Oh, there it is! Fuck me! It was there. It was there all along. It was inside us. All along. Right. Stop. Name. Reset. Cool. Well, I'm actually really pleased. Um, the fact that we're able to get something going really easily is kind of testament to the work that Borodust has been doing, and obviously to uh, 
the folks who made Chipmunk in the first place. But it's really cool that we're able to hack something together that just kind of works in Lisp. Um, yeah, I'm pleased with that. I mean, other than the clunkiness of having to do all the uh, having to do restarts, which is just it's not too bad, but it's just unusual when we're kind of used to how we how we fluently we normally work. Um, Yeah, wrong one. Fool. Yeah. <laughs> ah, nice. So that's why it was taking a while to come back down. Because all that momentum was getting... Uh, kicked up the world. <laughs> Found this is the slowest Donkey Kong barrel in the world. Yes! We have terrible, terrible Donkey Kong. Let's be charitable and say what that is, rather than <laughs> it's that, rather than just some shit. I don't know. Cool. Um, well, I know it's uh, early, but this is. I mean, the next bit I'd want to do is to refactor this into less of a kind of hodgepodge, and I would be also inclined to start sticking things in objects, so you can just do make ball and all that kind of stuff. But that's. That's not going to be done in the next 20 minutes. And so I think we'll probably just call it a day. Um, because otherwise the rest of the stream is going to be the start of a refactor, which isn't particularly interesting. But yeah, I'm this, this is what I wanted to achieve. <laughs> so it's working. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased about that. Um, and yeah, that's the lot. It, I, have, I have another 20 minutes. So if you guys do have any specific Keppel questions or anything like that, you want to pick my brain on while I'm here, I am happy to uh, go into some of that stuff. And otherwise, I'm going to call it a date. Meta Yan, good call. What repo is this in? It is in no repo because I have betrayed you. So let's do it. I even open this, ready to go. What should we call this? Bad barrel. There we go. Ask. Bombed a pimp. There we go. Done. Great. It's up to him to explain what this means. Um, okay, so we'll create a Git repository. Yes. Um, we are going to add a... How does this work? Not subtree. Where is it? Submodule? No. Here we go. Remote. Add. Origin. Remote URL is this. Yes. Set it to that. Um, oh, shoot. SSH add. Um, yep. And what do we need to do? Um, oh, yeah. Other things that I like having in all of these projects. Um, the works. Kevl. Just steal it from there. I would like to have an edit config file. I would like to have a git ignore file. And I'll just take, take the license from here as well. Um, and we'll copy those, not move them, into there. And... Whee! Upstream is going to be origin uh, master. Not master! Ah, oh, fuck it, oh well. <laughs> no! Origin master. God damn it. Right. Uh... <laughs> Delete branch. Okay. Um... There should be a git config in here. And we can just fix up this. Oh, everything's fine now. Wonderful. Right, done. Um, I'll read it out the. I'll read the question out anyway. Um, Inclusus. Um, is that how you would like me to pronounce that? I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think I've seen you around here before. So hey, if this is your first uh, time tuning in, and and as it has been explained by Sorted August, yes, the F zero and D zero are uh, common Lisp syntax for 
uh, single float and for double float. Um, what those exactly map to is somewhat implementation specific and but most of the time on uh, yeah most of the time this is going to be an um an ie standard uh single float uh 754 can't remember yeah that's the right one isn't it yeah something like that and likewise for the doubles but not required by the spec probably because the spec might predate that but we'll see right any more for any more and then i'm gonna go and Feast upon the caffeine. I think that's it. Awesome. Right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, pleasure having you as always. And uh, yeah, catch you next week. Ciao.